Welcome back to Tipton Bros. Today, we will be discussing the Claw of Archimedes. Before we begin, I must disclose that I am no expert and never claim to be. Now, let's get into it. Archimedes, born 287 BC, is recognized as the greatest mathematician of ancient history, whose contribution to the sciences has echoed throughout the centuries. He resided in the coastal city of Syracuse, located on the southeastern portion of the island of Sicily. The Greek polymath devoted time to studying a myriad of topics, formulating theories, and constructing complex gadgets to improve the quality of life for his fellow man. Archimedes strived for the advancement of understanding as a whole and the betterment of society, dedicating his life to the pursuit of knowledge. Archimedes was the catalyst for such fields as fluid mechanics, engineering, astronomy, and physics, to name a few. Truly one of mankind's brightest specimens. But when given complete autonomy to inflict casualties upon an invading force, a brilliant mind can be polished into a weapon of mass destruction. Archimedes did just this to defend his home city of Syracuse. The island of Sicily had long been a point of contention between Carthage and the Roman Republic due to its strategic value. Whoever possessed the landmass controlled the Mediterranean and was positioned within striking distance of the Italian peninsula. For this reason, ancient Rome held the location in high regard, wrestling away ownership from the Carthaginians during the First Punic War. The kingdom of Syracuse was under heavy Roman influence following the Carthaginian defeat in 241 BC, essentially becoming a puppet state for the sprawling republic. As the years dragged on, Roman control began to wane, and civil unrest amongst the Greek citizenry festered. The powder keg that was the Mediterranean erupted, pitting Carthage against Rome once more in the Second Punic War. Syracuse quickly became a priority for Roman officials, who dispatched seasoned general Marcus Claudius Marcellus to the shores of Sicily. Marcellus expected the divided city to crumble when faced with a seemingly superior adversary. But the isolated kingdom had yet to reveal their trump card. The ace in the hole was Archimedes himself. Archimedes looked upon warfare with disgust and viewed the act as barbaric. Despite this, his loyalty outweighed his disdain for conflict, and he would face the might of the Roman Republic. The siege of Syracuse began in 213 BC, as warships under the control of Marcellus navigated the Strait of Messina, crowding the seawalls of the capital. A variety of siege engines designed by Archimedes had been stockpiled for years and now were poised to strike. The Greek philosopher Plutarch describes the scene in his biography of Marcellus, stating that Archimedes was the one soul moving and managing everything, for all other weapons lay idle, and his alone were then employed by the city both in offense and defense. Boulders, stones, and bolts turned the sky to opaque darkness and pummeled the invading Romans on land and sea. Ballistae and catapults were again depicted by Plutarch. Shot against the land forces of the assailants, all sorts of missiles and immense masses of stones, which came down with incredible din and speed, he continues, knocked down in heaps those who stood in their way and threw their ranks into confusion. Marcellus was understandably puzzled at the obstacle set before him, but one machine was entirely unrecognizable. A behemoth which extended itself from the fortification and laid waste to his fleet, elevating his ships from the water as if they were weightless and smashing them back into the sea below. The foreign device which cast doubt across the decorated general's mind was in fact the Claw of Archimedes. Plutarch paints a scene of desperation expressing that, frequently too, a ship would be lifted out of the water and into midair, whirled hither and thither as it hung there, a dreadful spectacle, until its crew had been thrown out and hurled in all directions, when it would fall empty upon the walls or slip away from the clutch that had held it. So, what was the iron claw devised by Archimedes that instilled such fear into its victims? The weapon is mentioned briefly by Plutarch, but only vaguely, with no indication of technical details. With limited information, we are left to piece together how it functioned and what exactly it was. Likely, the Claw of Archimedes was a rudimentary crane fixed with a grappling hook and pulley system. The rope, or line, would be drawn down the reciprocating arm to the first pulley wheel. 
The rope would then be diverted to the second and last pulley at the base, dividing the load of the ship, which lessened the amount of force required to lift it. The mechanical advantage provided by the lever also aided in this undertaking. The line could then be retracted and dragged taut, usually by oxen, which in turn raised the long arm of the lever, lifting the ship from the Mediterranean. Pressure mounted until the second pulley would reach a tipping point and slip from its catch, in essence a trigger mechanism, slamming the vessel abruptly into the water. This was the claw of Archimedes. Impressive? Yes, but no wonder weapon. I even question its practicality as it was a stationary apparatus, unable to pivot, so meticulous placement would have been key to its success. As for Syracuse, the city would fall by 212 BC in under a year's time, and Archimedes would meet an untimely demise at the hands of a Roman soldier, but this is a story for another day. I hope you've enjoyed today's brief overview of the Claw of Archimedes. We are a small channel, so a like is greatly appreciated, and recommendations are always welcome. Again, I am no expert, and never claim to be. Until next time, on Tipton Bros.